today on Nurture Store we're talking about forest school and nature activities for spring. By the end of this video you'll have five great ideas you can do with your children this season to enjoy time outdoors and connect with nature and the cycle of the year. You'll have lesson ideas to teach your children about the seasons, science, gardening and nature journaling. All the ideas are easy to do, packed full of educational value and really enjoyable. So grab a cuppa and watch today's video and let's get planning and set our intentions for our spring teaching. If you're new here, I'm Cathy, the founder of Nurture Store. Nurture Store is all about learning through play and hands-on activities to raise happy, confident and skilled children. You can think of Nurture Store as your teaching fairy godmother as I give you ready-made lesson plans, activity ideas and lots of great resources to save you time and help you teach better. This is a friendly and supportive community and I'm so glad you're joining us. Please do subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up so that you'll see the other videos on the way in our Forest School and Nature playlist. Coming up, we have our month by month guide for gardening with kids and ideas to celebrate Earth Day. But today, let's talk about five ideas for forest school and nature study lessons for spring. If you only do one activity this season, I encourage you to take your children on a nature walk. I think they connect ourselves with ourselves, our family and our planet more than anything else. It's a time to pause in our full week, to breathe in the planet and spend time with our kids and exercise our bodies. Your children will also be learning about geography, geology, biology and even the weather. To follow the rhythm of the year and see the cycle of the seasons happening right before your eyes, I recommend adopting a landscape. This just means having a place in nature near to where you live that you visit regularly. It doesn't matter if it's your own property or a woodland or the banks of a river, a beach or a park in a city. Just claim it as your stomping ground and visit regularly with your children with your eyes and heart open and see how it changes over the year. You'll begin to recognise the plants and animals that live there. Know when the apple tree will be in fruit, notice that the birds are building nests a little later one year and really Build your knowledge and your children's knowledge and appreciation of your special ecosystem. In the spring curriculum, which you can find on the Nurture Store website and which I'll link to in the video description, you'll find a list of Nature Walk themes which match to each of our weekly topics in the curriculum. Ideas for themes walks which are great to do in spring include going on a signs of the season walk specifically looking out for the first signs of that new season and going on a plant hunt walk that's looking for a particular plant that's in season such as at this time of year maybe some snowdrops, daffodils, bluebells. You could go on a bird watching walk, focusing in on the birds that you can see, trying to identify them, watching their behaviour and listening for their calls. And you might like to go on a bug hunt walk. You can take magnifying glasses with you and see what creatures you can spot on trees, plants and on the ground. And if you have showers, you could take a rainy day walk and go puddle jumping. A great addition to your nature walk is our forest treasure hunt principle and again I'll put a link in the video description to where to go if you want to get a copy of this. This principle encourages us all to slow down and notice our surroundings. It adds a reading prompt for your children to look up, look down, look all around and see what things they can find to check off on the treasure hunt list. You can print this treasure hunt off from the Nurture Store website and then to make it reusable you can laminate it or pop it inside a plastic folder and then use wipeable markers to fill it in. You can take it along in your pocket to use it um, or you could use it with a clipboard if you want to give yourself a good writing surface. Um, tick off all the things your children can find and then you can add it to the nature journal that we're going to talk about in a minute. While you're out on your walk, you might like to forage for wild garlic. Foraging means to gather food from the wild. That could be from the woodland, hedgerows, fields or rivers. Um, it's the way we used to get much of our food and a really great way now for us to connect with nature and with our ancestors. 
there's a guide to foraging on the Nurture Store website which gives you some rules to follow and tells you which plants are in season that you might like to look out for. One plant my family loves to gather in spring is wild garlic. Its Latin name is Allium orsinum and ursa means bear, so it's sometimes called bear's garlic and bears do like to eat it when they come out of hibernation in the spring. It's also known as ramsoms or bear leek or buckrams. Tell me in the comments where you live and what you call it. It grows in shaded woodland and hedgerows and it's in season from February through to June. And it's easy to spot, um, it's a short, medium, perennial, it grows up to about 50 centimetres in height. Its leaves have got this broad elliptical shape ending in a point and it has white flowers with five petals in a star-like spray and it smells strongly of garlic. Both the leaves and the stems can be eaten. You must take care not to confuse wild garlic with lily of the valley or autumn crocus or meadow saffron because none of those things are edible. So you really want to make sure that you do know what you're picking. We follow our noses because only wild garlic has that distinctive garlic smell. If you'd like to, you can use my wild garlic nature journal page which you can print from the nurture store website. It will help your children to learn more about this spring food and they can read facts about wild garlic and use the ID guide to help them find it. They can even capture the scent of wild garlic on the page and then you can add the printable to their nature journal. It's and once you've picked some wild garlic, my favourite thing to do is to make pesto with it. I'll put a link in the video description to the recipe. It's really easy to make. Um, it's delicious on pasta or pizza or to use to make garlic bread. Have you made it before? How do you like to use it? The third thing you could do this season is start a nature journal. Spring is a great time to start because your children can build a record of the whole growing cycle of the year. You can get it started with just simple materials and there are lots of printables on the Nurture Store website that you can use um, as prompts and ideas for what to put in it. A nature journal is a great way to cover reading, writing, sketching and researching. Your children can make individual journals or you could make a collaborative journal as a whole family or a whole class. There are prompts on the Nurture Store website of all sorts of things you can add in your journal, including the wild garlic foraging principle and the forest treasure hunt principles that we've already talked about. We also have field notes and forest report pages that you can use. These are part of our Nature Explorers interactive nature journal. This is a fantastic tool to help children build their own science book. The field notes page has a space to make notes about what you see in the forest, where you found an item and the date, and a space to make a sketch of your item. And the forest report pages allows you to go into more depth when you get back home. You can look up the item you found in books or online, get more information about it. The left hand column of the page gives you some quick journal prompts to get your writing started. And then there's room on the right hand column to write up your report for your journal and the space below to add photographs or drawings. If you'd like to get one of these journals for your children, you'll find a link to them in the video description. More things you could include in your nature journal are your children's other drawings, photographs of the plants and animals you spot and the maps of the places that you walk. To make your journal an interesting record, you can encourage your children to journal like scientists. So you want to encourage them to look closely and draw what they see. And then look again, perhaps with a magnifying glass, and draw some more detail. Label the drawing and note any details you can see, where you found your item and the date that you saw it. And then encourage your children to wonder and to ask questions. Think about what you see and why things look the way they do. Encourage your children to share their findings with others and to ask other people if they know about the things they found. And also encourage your children to research some of the things in books or online to find out more. One art meets science activity to try this spring, which you can include in your nature journals as well, is to do a daffodil dissection. 
If you're a member of our Play Academy, you can download the ready-made daffodil thematic unit. This gives you all the lesson plans and printables that you need to teach your programme about daffodils that include science, art and poetry. If you're not yet a member of our Play Academy or you don't even know what the Play Academy is, you can find all the details in the video description. For the daffodil dissection, your children will be combining science with art, so they're using both analytical thinking and their creative talents. On Nurture Store, we love learning in this way, combining subjects for wider, more effective learning. Our lesson plan tells you how to dissect the daffodil and gives you all the vocabulary you need to learn the different parts of the plant. Your children can draw or photograph the daffodil and label it with all the new vocab. And you can draw or paint the daffodil as an artistic study using watercolour paint or pencils. The fifth idea for you today is to have a go at growing something from seed. If you love gardening with children, be sure to subscribe to the channel because I'll be bringing you monthly garden classroom guides with ideas of what to plant and harvest and do in the garden each month and also details of the Sunflower School curriculum we have. But even if you're not wanting to plant a whole garden this year, take the opportunity this spring just to plant some seeds with your children so they can learn all about germination and conduct a simple science experiment as they watch their seeds grow. I like to grow beans and peas with children as they're big seeds which makes them easy to handle and the different shapes make them an interesting contrast. They germinate quickly too, giving children something interesting to see without having to wait too long. To start your experiment, decide what you want to use as your soil and use it to fill a glass or clear plastic pot. For the best view, so your children can really see what's going on, you can use cotton wool, scrunched up tissue or kitchen paper. This won't give your plant sufficient nutrients to develop into a strong plant, but it is a great way to get a good view of a few seeds as they germinate. If you want to plant your seedlings out and grow them on into full plants, it's best to use soil or compost. So whatever you decide to use, dampen it down with a little water and pop your seeds inside. Place the seeds at the edge of the pot so you can get a good view of them as they begin to grow. And then have your children chart the seeds progress. You can decide together what you'd like to measure. Some ideas are how long does it take for something to start growing? How long before there's a leaf? How long before there's a flower? And how long before there's something to eat? You can ask your children to guess the answers to each question and record their predictions in their nature journals. You can graph the seeds progress too, so you're incorporating a different area of math. You can draw out a simple number line and count along the days, making a note of germination, the first leaf, etc. as you go along. This is good for younger children who just want to count. If you have older children, they could draw a tally chart or a bar graph to compare a pea and a bean seed alongside each other. You can also make a graph with an x-axis showing the number of days and a y-axis showing the height of your plant. When the seeds begin to grow, you could take photographs or draw pictures of what you see. And there's lots of opportunity for discussion too. Chat about what's happening, get your children to share their ideas and their knowledge. You can talk about things like, what are all the parts of the plant called? Why does a seed need roots and leaves? How does the seed know how to put the root at the bottom and the leaf at the top? What would happen if you turned a seed upside down when the root has just begun to grow? And what happens when you turn the plant around so it's facing the window from a different side? You can record all of your questions and your ideas and your investigations in your nature journal. So there are five suggestions for you to think about doing with your children this spring. Nature walks, nature journals, daffodil dissections, growing some seeds and foraging or eating foods in season like the wild garlic pesto. Which one do you like best? Another nature idea which is great for Easter too is growing eggheads and I'll share more about them in an upcoming video so do subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out. Please give the video a thumbs up and until next time I hope you have a great week with your children.